Hi, everybody. It's still August 11, 2021. I posted this video earlier. I want to read some comments and I want to address some of those comments as well as a video that um, I was asked to take a look at and just go over that executive order that Governor Lee signed signed very quietly also whole lot of comments that I've received uh, nobody knew about it in Tennessee that means it was signed very quietly okay um, the comments and I kind of have to do this fast because I have this PDF um, program that I can highlight but if I don't get to it fast all the highlighting comes off can't figure out where to save it so let's just read some of these comments all right um eo 83 is not calling up military calling up only medical personnel for field hospitals however there is a nearby slippery slope that this may possibly lead to okay good that you went um to the slippery slope but it's not only first of all it is calling up military national guard and state guard okay when did we get a state guard perhaps we got the state guard when the national guard that was the military for governors was usurped by the federal government's military Okay, a whole lot of people don't know that. Um, so, it is calling up military. You're wrong on that point. And it's not just calling up medical personnel for field hospitals, um, which I'll go into explaining. Watching pinball preparedness as I type this, folks need to hear his explanation, frankly. I don't think they need to hear his explanation, and I will tell you why. Um, let's see. I read it. It did not seem too bad. Maybe I missed something. From what I read, he is allowing medical staff from other states to be able to treat those with C-19, plus more ambulance drivers. If you read the whole thing, how is it that you just came up with that? Uh, Mike Adams. Okay, I don't read Mike Adams. I didn't read the article. I was going from Tim Truth's uh, video. He does give credit to Mike Adams. So uh, why give credit to Mike Adams? This was an executive order that, you know, give credit because somebody found it first. All right. Um, anyway, Mike Adams... I, <laughs> In reading Mike Adams in a whole lot of those articles that I used to read years ago, but it's too dramatic, you know, a, a reading for me. His writing is very dramatic. That doesn't mean that he's wrong, um, but it's not my taste. Um, you should not believe everything that anybody says. So good for you, Kathy. Um, things like this cause more fear. Well, if you put in context an executive order that comes out written the way that was written, I'm not saying get scared. That was a very, and still is, a very concerning executive order, and I will point out why. Um, the, uh, no, you're right, don't believe everything that anybody says you know if you're in doubt you check it out yourself you don't have to rip people apart by the way uh, which this guy pin prepper prepperness or something did um make sure everyone reads this bill for themselves exactly right make sure everyone reads this bill for themselves and do not trust anyone's interpretation I'm just going to show you how I interpret and how I read uh, these executive orders. 
The Tennessee and our governor was basically as laxed as Florida and Texas. Well, if you want to believe, you know, your politicians, you have every right to, because as far as I am concerned, that freedom still exists. Um, you've got to be very, very careful, though. Now, a lot of people have said that I support DeSantis. No, I don't. I don't support any politician. Um, you know, some things they do, and you're like, oh, okay, that's good. But then they do other things that are not so good. All right? So um, your Tennessee governor may have been relaxed. Well, maybe that was to bring you into the fold. We don't know. Everything needs to be questioned, and you do not put your trust in people that you do not know. You sure don't put your trust in politicians. Um, there are doctors and nurses who may quit or be fired for not complying to get the shot, so he may be making sure there is not a medical shortage. I guess I will see it sooner or later if this is the case. Well, you know what? Waiting to see, not a good strategy because you may see something and it's way too late to do anything about it. Um, <laughs> You ought to be ashamed of yourself for trying to teach legal language without knowing how to correct, correctly read it. Uh, is this to me? I didn't even read it, but anyway. The only things being suspended, Title 63 and Title 68, uh, of the Health and Safety Code, allowing non-licensed operatives and effectively relieving all hospitals and facilities of liability for services rendered during the emergency of COVID. See, world view, your domestic view, your view of what is taking place is based on how much knowledge you have based on how much research you have done, history, and you find out that there's an awful lot of people who don't really understand what's happening. Yeah, they're in this community, but they don't get what's really going on. See, they would never leave a comment like this if they did, because they would understand, okay, everything needs to be questioned you interpret things, and then you can interpret it another way. Well, you better take the way that is a danger to you and all of us because it's kind of silly to interpret it in a way that, well, he's just trying to protect our health, and should we have that? A emergency then well he's prepared you really think these politicians are looking out for your health looking out for that medical system that's just going to be overwhelmed well it wasn't only the medical system but I'll get to that I live in a small town in Tennessee and checked last year for concentration camps found out they're all around me including one prison camp used for Germans during the war take pictures Take pictures. If you don't post, send them off to people who do post. That's really, really important. Um, and I was praying about whether or not to see a therapist early this year. Look into how <laughs> dangerous are therapists. Psychiatry, the field of psychology, it's not what it used to be. Prepping, no. Tennessee governor did not authorize arrests and FEMA camps. Well, I'll show you another interpretation. Um, and because somebody else has a different interpretation, that doesn't warrant 
or give anybody permission to rip them to shreds. All right, so, I don't know, maybe, well, I left a pretty lengthy response to this call. Did you mean to write Carol? I'm noticing a whole lot of wrong words and comments lately. Um, please check out video. Okay, he speaks on this video. He's in Tennessee. Tennessee is not authorizing arrests in FEMA camps. Interesting. It doesn't matter if he's in Tennessee or not. What matters is if he has gotten out of his matrix thinking. And I do not believe he has. He seems to have been indoctrinated by mainstream media. He seems to believe the official narrative. Now, if you believe the official narrative about this pandemic, that will lead your thinking as you're reading the executive order. It's all well and good. He's only doing it because we may have another outbreak and, well, he's prepared. He's ready. Um, so, yeah, and, you know, listening to someone that does seem to have that mainstream media thinking, um, and then hear how emphatic they are that this is not this and not this and not that. And not, uh, okay. Well, you know, just because somebody says it's not something doesn't mean they're right. When you put into context everything that is taking place, all of the lies, and when you look at this executive order, it is extremely concerning. Okay, it's uh, an executive order that became effective on August 6, and it dies um, October 5, I think. Okay, short period of time, and your governor quietly releases this ex executive order. That's concerning, but he really he has this executive order for only a couple of months and this executive order is specific to the pandemic oh but I'll get to those mental health provisions mental health provisions that this guy did not seem to concern himself with he, all he kept saying was the mental health provisions, they have nothing to do with COVID. Then what are they doing in there? That should be the next order of thinking. Then what are they doing in there? Um, all right, so specific to COVID, hospitalizations are increasing increasing uh, positive case rates and I guess an increasing burden on the healthcare system. Okay, uh, we already know that this is based on a lie. What good can come from that? Uh, cases means nothing. Are hospitalizations increasing? Is the burden on the healthcare system in Tennessee so heavy that there is it necessitates this executive order? Well, that's what you guys in Tennessee need to check out. Go to your hospitals. In fact, I got a comment from somebody, but I don't know what state they were in. And I think their sister-in-law works in a hospital. And she purposefully meets with her sister-in-law to have lunch in the hospital once a week to check out what's happening in the hospital. Uh, that is what is that needs to be done. Um, so we know that mainstream media puts out a whole lot of propaganda. 
And when you don't know that, you're going to go wrong on your interpretations. You're not even going to have an open mind to have several different interpretations. Out-of-state health care providers may practice in Tennessee. So this ha executive order, wow, he must know that something is going on. Is there going to be a massive outbreak of, let's say, the Delta variant coming up shortly? That's not good for any of us because that leads to lockdowns. Um, Practical nursing graduates may practice under supervision. The suspension of rules and regulations and provisions of codes, Tennessee codes, and um, payments, Medicaid, and paying uh, nursing facilities. And wow, okay, he must know something is just right around the corner here. Um, you know, and we could see a massive outbreak coming from the vaccinated. And they'll call it the Delta variant. And we're going to see an awful lot of people going to the hospitals, people dying. But it's not because of this pandemic. Medical professional staffing f uh, flexibility. Uh, yeah, suspension of licensure, uh, suspension of, uh, it essentially just allows people to come in, practice from other states. The behavioral health and the mental health provisions are very, very concerning. What are they doing in this executive order if it's all about COVID? But behavioral health, inpatient, psychiatric, residential, and crisis care staffing flexibility to authorize professionals licensed under 63, 68 to perform tasks outside of their licensed scope of practice uh, if such tasks are performed in an inpatient psychiatric facility in a behavioral health residential facility or by a behavioral health crisis service provider. What? Okay. So the psychiatrists and the psychiatric nurses and the, the mental health uh, professionals are now allowed in Tennessee to practice outside the scope of their practice. Why? Are they going to be giving COVID treatments to people in psychiatric facilities and behavioral health? M mind, mind you, behavioral health crisis service providers, that includes your local community mental health center where an awful lot of people just go for therapy. <clears throat> um, you know, the good thing about people not going to therapy, if you have one of those records, they have all of that information on you. So, you know, those people who, well, I'm not doing anything illegal, so I have nothing to fear, and I don't care that, you know, our government is listening to us. Very dangerous. Free societies should not have people like that who think like that because they won't protect their own freedom. Surveillance going on also in mental health community centers, behavioral health crises, uh, services, psychiatric institutions. So, well, if it comes down to legislation being passed, that you don't have a right to own any <clears throat> any um, gun or whatever. 
because you have this record. Too bad for you. Um, you're... I'm, look, they did it in the Soviet Union, you know. The dissonance, the dissonance with the records, mm, they could easily be picked up soon here in our country. Um, healthcare student staffing flexibility permitted in inpatient psychiatric. Okay, so now they're, they're having the crossing of health and mental health. Nursing staff or student staffing? For what purpose? That's what needs. You need to ask, okay, what is the purpose here? If you've got that mainstream media thinking you're still in the matrix and you believe what you're hearing, you won't go any further than to say, this is all well and good. They're doing this to protect us. If you're a little bit outside that, you need to ask questions about, okay, what is the purpose of this? What's the purpose of this provision? You know, um, and it's very taxing, man. It's tiring. It's, it's just exhausting. But, you know, what are they going to be doing? Because apparently the mental health can also cross over to health and for what reason? Okay, so the reason is to relieve the capacity strain on bedside care resulting from staffing shortages related to inpatient acute care, inpatient behavioral health, emergency care. Uh, okay, we'll go back to one of the comments that I read, they may be getting ready to replace all of the people who will not get vaccinated. And if there's a lot of them, that certainly will put a strain on the medical system. It will also put a strain on the mental health system if a whole lot leave. But is that the only thing? Could they be doing this because they want people to be in positions where they don't really understand the field and they end up taking orders that puts somebody in jeopardy? Now, as extreme as that sounds, that needs to be considered today. Um, discretion to utilize National Guard. Now, he said that provision is only taking doctors and nurses. No, it's not. No, it is not. It is, well, discretion to utilize National Guard or State Guard members in connection with certain health care and emergency services operations. Uh, to serve in certain health care and emergency services roles to reduce uh, the system's strain. Personnel may perform authorized diagnostic testing for COVID in health care settings, including but not limited to hospitals, emergency departments, and alternate care sites, facilities, perform authorized nursing and other functions in facilities, operate public or privately owned permitted ambulance services, uh, service vehicles. So it does appear that, well, your governor is thinking, we're going to have a whole lot of people who are going to be requiring medical services and apparently mental health services because well you can authorize well for the ambulances driving those ambulances um, 
well, I'll get to that in one second, but <laughs> the suspension, all related rules uh, with respect to licensure, continuing education, and other requirements for personnel or facilities utilizing personnel. You don't have to be licensed. Um, it appears that you don't really need all that much education. This is bringing in the military. So anybody who is saying it doesn't bring in the military, you haven't read the document. All right. Um, but, <clears throat> excuse me, ambulance transport services. Y you, all you need now is to be 18 years of age, must possess either a Class D or Class F driver's license, and must possess at least one year of driving experience. So all other qualifications suspended. Designation and payment for certain nursing facilities. The rules, regulations, policies hereby suspended. Medicaid payments, the provisions and requirements under Tennessee code, suspended. Increase the number of hospital beds available, all those rules suspended so that hospitals can just stick in other beds. But this, to me, is the most concerning. Now, originally, or initially, when he was talking about that provision, he said you know, it would be the telescreen. Well, no, no. But then he reads the provision, but doesn't correct himself, but reads, it's a telephone call? Telephone assessments for involuntary commitment cases are permitted? A telephone call? Uh, yep, provisions, Tennessee Code, suspended to the extent necessary to allow the issuance of a certificate of need under the Tennessee Code for the emergency involuntary commitment. That's arrest. If you don't know anything about involuntary commitment, that is arresting someone. You are forcibly put into a psychiatric institution. And you have no say of getting out. That is arrest. Okay, so for those who are saying this doesn't, you know, say anything about arresting people, well, you better look into a little bit more um, deeply what is involuntary commitment. But based on a telephone call, that is very concerning. Yeah, and involuntary commitment. Now, you would think, okay, an emergency, and you're talking about somebody who is on the ledge, ready to jump and kill themselves, or, you know, standing over somebody with a, a gun or a knife, or I said that a little bit exaggerated, but involuntary commitment is about that. You are, in fact, uh, and you have been diagnosed as ready to commit imminent harm upon yourself or another. Many states have rules where you cannot involuntarily commit somebody without two diagnoses and maybe a court order. I think that's, that's right. Here, all that is suspended, one telephone call, and you can involuntarily commit a person with a mental illness or serious emotional disturbance or, okay, how many people are diagnosed with a mental illness? Should I just say, well, he would never do that. Why? 
Why don't you think? Your governor, well, he, he's pretty much given away his authority, you know, in terms of doing all of this stuff. Just a mental illness. So somebody's depressed? Telephone call? Yeah, how did they get the telephone call? Is it because a family member or a friend or an enemy calls and says, hey, this person, really, you got to get somebody to make a phone call? That's it. Based upon a telephone assessment by a mandatory pre-screening agent. Pre-screening? What does that mean? Who is the pre-screening agent? Okay, look at your Tennessee Code annotated sections 336104-336-427. They can do this if the following conditions are met. The mandatory pre-screening agent is not reasonably able to conduct an evaluation in person or via readily available telehealth services. The mandatory pre-screening agent determines in the agent's professional judgment that conducting the assessment via telephone with the person is clinically appropriate. Okay. This is truly the most concerning provision in this executive order. It does allow for the arrest of people and <clears throat> the pre-screening agent, I have not looked into your Tennessee codes, but it doesn't mean that in some states, it, de it really depends state to state. It could be somebody in the mental health field, but not a psychiatrist and not a psychologist. It could just be some mental health, you know, um, therapist, or even they don't even have that. They might have studied psychology in their undergraduate. Mental health, <laughs> the, the diagnoses are subjective, subjective. So in a telephone call, maybe you'll look at the person if you have that kind of cell phone, or maybe not. So, to just write this off as having nothing to do with COVID and you're not even asking yourself, well, why is it in there? That, to me, is very shallow thinking. It's the matrix, mainstream media thinking. Uh, temporary quarantine, isolation facilities may be constructed. Um, well, I guess, according to PIN preparedness. Uh, if he doesn't see concentration camp, that actual, you know, name of a structure, then it doesn't exist. Okay. But inspections also. <laughs> inspections of mental health and substance abuse facilities and services suspended. Uh, suspended the construction to allow the construction of temporary structures, provisions of the Tennessee Code are suspended. For new construction, additions, substantial alterations, uh, inspections of the structures to make sure they're safe, well, that continues. Um, healthcare licensing inspections and investigations suspended. Inspections of healthcare facilities suspended. Why is everything suspended? Okay. Because everybody is going to be so busy 
with the pandemic. You won't even have those inspectors that go by hospitals or mental health facilities to inspect. They, they're, they're where, where are, oh, I guess they're non-essential maybe. Okay. The thing that is most important and I'll, New World Order Insider, I've brought this up a lot. And it's really important. This was a 1969 lecture. Dr. Uh, Richard Day, he gave this lecture to his students in 1969. One of the students, Dr. Lawrence Dunnigan, who in the very early 80s sat down with a journalist or someone and recalled that lecture. And his recollections were transcribed. And Dr. Day, who was considered to be one of the insiders, considering that a professor of pediatrics, Mount Sinai, uh, former, well, he's dead now, but former medical director of Planned Parenthood, Federation of America, 1969. It, Planned Parenthood is a eugenist um, institution eugenics. So if he was the medical director, eh, I'd say he was an insider. Um, so New World so System, um, you can read this document. I'm not going into everything to make everything clear to you, but if you look at the contents, you will see most of what was stated in 1969 has come true, but important to what we are well, what I am discussing here um, is most people don't understand how governments operate. And this is what Dr. Day said. They don't understand how governments operate, even people in high positions in governments, including our own here in the United States, don't really understand how and where decisions are made. And the other thing, people are too trusting. People don't ask the right questions. So it's amazing to me that still there are people who trust. They trust government officials. They trust their governor, their leaders, their mainstream media reporters. Okay, we've been lied to over and over and over again. You don't trust liars. But Americans continue on trusting. You read an executive order from any governor or president, and executive orders, by the way, violate the Constitution. But hey, this has been going on forever because we trust, right? All right. Um, especially at a time that we are living, seeing the economy being destroyed, and what I don't understand is the prepping. Okay, all is well and good. You're prepping for something to happen. I guess you don't think it's related to government or I don't know. Anyway, um, so people don't ask the right questions. We don't ask any questions. Questions need to be asked. The real and the stated goals. Everything has two purposes. One is the ostensible purpose, which will make it acceptable to people. And so when you hear others chiming in with what is acceptable, you know, this, well, what does he title it? He essentially, you know, just uh, believes his governor is, you know, this executive order. There, you don't, don't have any concern. It's no problem. Um, he did authorize arrests. That's what involuntary commitment is. The FEMA camps, well, call it whatever you want, but you're just now going to be creating more temporary uh, what did he say, field hospitals, 
uh, I would have thought people, more people, would begin to question, would begin to question this narrative. Why do they keep repeating the same thing? All right, well, um, any kind of facility that is being constructed to place people in Call it what you want. Certainly involuntary commitment. You are sticking somebody in a camp and that they have no say about it. You want to call, because you haven't seen the word arrest, it means no arrest. Okay. There is an ostensible purpose for every piece of legislation, and then there's the real purpose that you don't get to hear about. That real purpose is what you need to interpret for yourself. When you're living a very dangerous time, unprecedented here in the United States, and you see an executive order like this governor signed in Tennessee, yeah, you need to be concerned. All right. Didn't expect to go on and on. I, I, I apologize, but, you know. The links are below. You can interpret this. And the, the Kathy, I think, who wrote, comment, read it for yourself. Absolutely. You know, um, don't go just simply by what somebody else says without, you know, if you don't read the order, which I did, and I didn't read it all that um, carefully because I've been reading these kinds of things forever, but I knew enough to know that Even what Mike is saying, as dramatic as it is, you don't need to rip him to shreds, which is what this guy does. Because that's Mike's interpretation, considering everything in context, everything that we have lived through, everything that we are continuing to live through. Yeah. One interpretation can be very dramatic. Hell, people can say, I'm dramatic. What I've been saying is, that executive order is very concerning, especially when it involves a telephone call. Oops, okay, we're going to send the police and involuntarily commit you to an institution. All right, sorry. I, I just, I can't stop. I didn't even want to do this. I'm so tired of having to go back and, you know, look, it would be great if that executive order is uh, just fabulous. It's about protecting one's health and these mental health provisions. So what? It says involuntary commitment. It has nothing to do with COVID. So what is it doing in there in that executive order? Okay. Um, and I read some of the comments below and yeah, people are right on board. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, this is also one of the ways in which people, you know, because they get support for the good feeling that they want. Oh, good. This man is saying what I want to hear. They sit back and do nothing. The nothingness is killing us. Okay, guys. Ciao.